there. This is A.D. Robles, and you're listening to A.D. on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. All right, all right. Well, today, let's jump right into it. But before I do, let me just say thank you to all of the subscribers to the YouTube channel. Thank you for everyone who listens to this podcast. Um, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for people listening. So I hope you find this helpful and all of that kind of thing. If you haven't considered doing it, please consider becoming a Fight, Laugh, Feast Network Club member. Uh, Use the show code ROBLES, R-O-B-L-E-S. Use the show code ROBLES, R-O-B-L-E-S, to let us know that you enjoy this content, and we will keep making it for you. I hope you're planning on joining us in just about a month in uh, in Nashville. We're having a conference, our first Fight, Laugh, Feast conference. It should really be a good time. I'm not doing any presentations or anything, but I'll be there, so I hope to see you there as well. Today I wanted to talk about just what it what my in my opinion is like the primary play that's going on right now the, the thing about our time you know in, in 2020 is that that our enemies are running multiple plays on us at the same time we've got the riots we got the coronavirus we got all this stuff all designed to well who really knows i mean obviously the the obvious goal is to make sure that trump doesn't get reelected but Beyond that, you know, it's very difficult sometimes to discern the motivations of people and things like that. But what I think what we have to do, though, is recognize that the things that are happening right now, it's not just accidental. Like, there's so many things, and they all seem to be very, very coordinated. Now, you may have noticed um, very recently, there were a lot of people talking about QAnon again. And I'm not the only one who's noticed this, but but it, you know, take think about the past you know six months or so, and when Big Eva, you know, evangelical leaders start talking about QAnon, it's always at the same time that the media is talking about QAnon as well. It it, it, it comes in waves. It's almost like they all got a memo, and it's like, all right, the time to talk about how dangerous QAnon is is now. Um, and it's just crazy. Like they all got their orders, and so they all do it. Um, the other way to look at it, the less cynical way, which it's sad that this is the less cynical way, but the, the less cynical way to look at it is to think, well, Big Eva, all they're doing is just looking at what CNN is doing and then doing the same thing. That's pretty much what I've said in general. Like basically people take their cues from CNN on what's allowed to be talked about. Um, and Joe Carter's no exception. Joe Carter went on a little bit of a QAnon tear uh, over the last week or so about how dangerous it is. He's the guy who wrote the QAnon is a satanic cult kind of thing. And not just QAnon, any conspiracy theory, he said, is a satanic cult. And I did a couple of videos about why I think that's very problematic because the reality is that we, we know for a fact that things that were called conspiracy theories a year ago are no longer conspiracy theories. They're now admitted by the United States government. And so if you're going to say a conspiracy theory is satanic and it's a you're a non-believer if you believe in a conspiracy theory, then you're basically saying that the definition of sin changes depending on I don't know what CNN's reporting that day, what the government's admitting that day. And the example that I was using was that, you know, you know, a few years ago, if you believed that UFOs were real and they were studied by the United States government, you were a conspiracy theorist. And Joe Carter would say that you're satanic and you need to be converted. You're not a Christian if you believe in UFOs a few years ago. But today, the government admits that they study UFOs, that they say that they're real, and um, they study them, and they have videos of them and things like that, and they, you know, they've, they've got evidence for these UFOs. And so now, in order to not believe in UFOs, you'd have to be a conspiracy theorist. So if you don't believe the government that they actually study UFOs and you believe some other kind of conspiracy that they're just telling you they study UFOs, well, now... You're a satanic sinner who needs to be converted to Christ. And so you see the definition of sin would change over time depending on what CNN's reporting or whatever the government's reporting. But you see, none of these rules are consistent. You see what I'm saying? So like like the definition of conspiracy theory is malleable and it's, to be honest, it's a propaganda tool. Conspiracy theory is a term that has been weaponized by shady characters to essentially shut down certain conversations or to promote certain conversations. It's a very sneaky um, tool. And to be honest, you know, I've joked around that Joe Carter might be an asset. 
uh, a CIA asset. He's on the payroll in some capacity. Either he's an agent himself or he's a you know a co-conspirator kind of thing. I've joked around like that, but you see, even, but 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 I, I have no evidence of that, of course. But if he couldn't be doing a better job, you know what I mean? Like he couldn't be doing a better job if he was on the payroll. Because here's a thread. I'm not going to read the whole thread because it's uh, who cares, right? But here's Joe Carter. There's a a CBS story that U.S. Marshals saved 39 missing children from uh, from a trailer park or something like that. 39 missing children, and it's very strongly implied in this thing that they were essentially sex slaves, right? The U.S. Marshals found them. 39. Can you imagine 40 kids in in like two trailer parks or something like that, or or, or some kind of home or something like that, and. And instead of being like, this is amazing, man, thank God that these 40 kids are safe, Joe Carter goes on a QAnon rant because QAnon, of course, at least presumably, is about saving children of sex trafficking and satanic cults and things like that. And so he takes this opportunity of this great news that that, that the U.S. Marshals have found 40 exploited kids, people that were abused, sex abuse victims things of that nature, and he takes it as an opportunity to continue to bash conspiracy theories in general and QAnon in particular. That's a really twisted way to, 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 to look at this news. Like, can you imagine being in a place where you're a human being, like not a robot or a lizard person, not a robot or a lizard person, and you read a story about 40 kids being rescued from sex slavery, and the first thing you think of, oh, I got those QAnon people now, like you are twisted my friend joe this is why there's this this is why there's this this like how who is this guy is he even real has anybody even seen joe carter in real life i mean because he if he was a robot i couldn't i wouldn't be able to tell because his his content is so robotic it's just like whatever cnn's reporting whatever cnn's reporting whatever the official position is like that's that's how his content is how did he become an editor of the gospel coalition that's another thing like this guy is he his writing is so boring and it's so safe and it's so just standard. It's just like you could honestly, like, I'd rather read CNN. Honestly, I'd rather read CNN. At least it's more interesting. The content is a little bit more quality. But like you read Joe Carter, you read San CNN, it's indistinguishable, essentially. So anyway, um, but but this is, it, it goes beyond QAnon because I don't really care about QAnon. You know, I've ta I know people that are very into QAnon. Um, they're good people. Like Joe Carter wants you to. Joe Carter wants you to think that they're devil worshippers and they're satanic, and all they do is lie, and all they want to do is they just love Trump blindly, and then everything's about Trump. But that's a that's a fantasy. That's not how it is. That's not how it is. Most people who are into QAnon, they recognize that there's definitely things about QAnon that don't make any sense, um, and they're not blindly you know pro Trump. They are pro Trump typically, but they're not blindly pro Trump, and so. He, he tries to make this this whole thing, it's like it's religion, and you just have to be devoted to it completely, blah, 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 blah. It's just not the case at all. It's just a big fabrication. Jo Joe Carter is well known for making things up. He, somebody, somebody shared with me, I'll try to put the link in the description of this uh, podcast. Somebody shared with me an article that Joe Carter wrote a few years ago about Bitcoin, and it is hilarious. It is just mwah, Spicy. I'm going to let somebody else handle that article because I actually am not a Bitcoin uh, expert or even really a Bitcoin aficionado, although I do own some coin. I'm just saying I'm not like the most uh, the biggest proponent of it. I prefer gold. But um, but yeah, this this article, even in my layman sort of understanding of it, you could just see that this insanity in this article. Joe Carter is not careful. He's not that he thinks he's smart, but he's not smart. But actually, maybe he is. And he's just on the payroll. Right. Maybe he is smart, but he's just on the payroll. So he has to put forward a specific narrative. He can't stray from it. He's got to be on message at all times. That's 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 basically Joe Carter on message at all times. And it ain't the message from the Bible. It's the message from CNN. But anyway, but this is why I think this is so damaging, because he, Joe Carter and people like him, people that receive their orders in the email and the mail and their, you know, this is you know, destroy this message. This message will self-destruct five minutes after you hear it kind of thing. He got their orders to talk about conspiracy theories again. They were laying the groundwork for what is essentially a media trick. Let me explain what I mean. Yesterday, I was in uh, my cable company's office, in the office. I went to it because I wanted to get a SIM card for a smartphone. Yes, I finally have a smartphone. If you want to see it, it is a pink iPhone. I'm borrowing my wife's pink iPhone. I'm using this now. I held out for quite some time. I didn't have a smartphone, but I got one today, a used pink 
iPhone because I needed it for work. Anyway, so while I'm there, they're watching MSNBC. I never watch MSNBC because I, 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 I care about myself too much to watch MSNBC. But they're watching MSNBC at the, at the office, so I'm listening in. And so what the, what the MSNBC people are talking about is, of course, the election. And it's not news. Obviously, everybody knows that MSNBC is not really news. Basically, what they're saying is that President Donald Trump is spreading is spreading a bunch of conspiracy theories. And so as soon as I heard that word, I knew, okay, I see the play now. People like Joe Carter got their orders in the mail to start undermining conspiracy theories. And then a week later, they're going to call what President Trump is saying a conspiracy theory. Bingo, bango, that's how you, that, there's the narrative right there. Joe Carter laid the groundwork. He took his orders like a good little boy. He took his orders like a, 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 a dutiful little soldier. You know what I mean? He's just a soldier, Joe Carter. You can't really blame him. He's just a soldier. He laid the groundwork for this, and now they're going to call President Trump a conspiracy theorist. But if you notice, this goes against the, 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 the consistency of their narrative because I thought if an official source gave us information, we had to believe it. Otherwise, we were a satanic conspiracy theorist. But now, if Trump says it, if you believe it, you're believing a conspiracy theory. So they got you both ways. It doesn't matter what's true. It doesn't matter what's consistent. It doesn't matter. It's just Joe Carter got his orders, and he's a good little soldier, and he's going to do it. Okay, Daddy, I'll do it. That's Joe Carter for you. He might, he might be on the payroll. I, I was joking about that at first, but it's possible that he's on the payroll. No question. I have no evidence of this. Just before you get all mad at me, I have no evidence of this. But if he was on the payroll, he couldn't be doing a better job than he is right now for laying the groundwork for this narrative. See, that's the idea. I want to I want to spread the idea amongst Christians that conspiracy theories are satanic and 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 QAnon loves Trump and they're satanic. And 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 now Trump is promoting conspiracy theories and he's satanic. That's the narrative here. And so, so, so it doesn't take any discipline at all. It doesn't take any knowledge or any carefulness. It doesn't take any courage to come out against conspiracy theories because we all know that there are some wackadoodle conspiracy theories out there. But when you just throw the label on something, and it doesn't matter, you just throw the label on something, all you're doing is throwing shade, and it's a very dishonest way to play the game. It's a very dishonest way to play the game because we all know that there's a difference between uh, there's lizard people that live in the core of the earth and I believe this government studies UFOs, and they've been doing it for decades. But you call them both conspiracy theories, you call them satanic, and that's the whole idea. You, you throw shade, and eventually the president of the United States says something. You call it a conspiracy theory, now he's Satan. Let's listen to this. This is what they were calling a conspiracy theory. I really want you to hear this because th you can see the narrative being spun and Joe Carter right there doing his bestest for his soul. Okay, General, I'll do it doing his best little, good little drummer boy soldier impression. And here we go. This is what the, the MSNBC talking heads were calling a conspiracy theory. And I want you to hear this because this is important. Trolled like a puppet. So it's not going to be calm things down. It's going to be they will have won. They will have taken over your cities. It's a revolution. You understand He's that. He's talking about the protests, right? He's talking about the riots. He's talking about people burning buildings to the ground. He's saying this is a revolution, right? This is what the MSNBC people were calling conspiracy theories. This is why Joe Carter took his orders like a good little boy and did what he did last week, coming out strong against conspiracy theories in the weirdest of ways. When an article comes out about 40 kids being saved from sex trafficking, he's not that happy about it. He just wants to blast QAnon. Listen to this. It's a revolution, and the people of this country will not stand for that. They're not going to stand for that. The vast majority of people feel like me. They feel like every time I put law and order up on social media, it gets such an incredibly positive response. The people of this country will not stand for it. If you say calm things down, yeah, calm things down because they will have taken over. Take a look at what's going on. And Biden, well, Biden is, I, I don't even like to mention Biden because he's not controlling anything. Who, who do you they think is pulling him. Biden? All right, I want you to stop right here, okay? the president of the United States of America. There could, could there be a more official position for a good little boy like Joe Carter to, to be like, you have to listen to him because otherwise you're a conspiracy theorist. Again, I'm not saying this. This is from Joe's perspective here. 
He's the one that's saying that conspiracy theories are satanic. Look, when a, when, a, when, a, when a politician's lips are flapping, take it with a huge grain of salt. Always. Always. But listen to this because you see the groundwork that was laid last week to today. Listen to this. Uh, is it former Obama People officials? that you've never heard of. People that are in the dark shadows. People that oh, What are, does that mean? That sounds like conspiracy theory. Dark shadows. No, what is people that? that you haven't heard of. They're, they're people that are on the streets. They're people that are controlling the streets. We had somebody get on a plane from a certain city this weekend. And in the plane, it was almost completely loaded with, with thugs wearing these dark uniforms, black uniforms with gear and this and that. They're, they're on a plane. Where is the where is per- this? I'll tell you sometime, but I, I'm, it's under investigation right now. But they came from a certain city, and this person was coming to the Republican National Convention. And there were like seven people on the plane like this person, and then a lot of people were on the mm-hmm. plane to do big damage. They were coming from Planning for Washington. Yeah, this was all, this is all happening. But the money is coming from somewhere. Money is coming from from some very stupid rich people that have no idea that if their thing ever succeeded, which it won't, they will be thrown to the wolves like you've never seen before. All right, so listen to this. So Donald Trump just said, and look, maybe he's making this up. I don't know. I have no idea because I don't really trust politicians, obviously. But what he's saying here makes a lot of sense, and it fits a lot of data that we've verified independently. We see that these riots are organized. They're not just people that are getting pissed off and taken to the streets, and they see a brick on the ground, they grab it and throw it. No, the bricks are pre-planned. They're put there, right? They're organized. They're obviously organized. This is not up for debate, right? What he's saying fits a lot of the data. Now, will he come forward with evidence eventually? He, he, I mean, he better. I mean, if someone's going to get charged with this, then he better. But the thing is, though, that for, a, for, a, for a good little boy like Joe Carter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because he uses conspiracy theory, that term, that phrase, that turn of phrase as a bludgeon to shut down things he don't like. That's the point. And so he'll lay the groundwork. Conspiracy theories are satanic. Without explaining which ones, what he means, what kind of evidence is, is, is required, what kind of evidence it exists for things, nothing like that. It's just a blanket sort of bludgeon. And then the next, very next week, mainstream media, and even uh, Laura Ingram called it one there, is saying Donald Trump is peddling conspiracy theories. You see how the narrative works. Joe Carter lays the cover fire, and then MSNBC launches the attack. Am I saying Joe Carter and MSNBC are in cahoots? I'm not saying that, but it certainly operates in a way that it's very coordinated. Now, I think, frankly, a guy like Joe Carter, he's not on the payroll, but what he does do is he just says, what everybody else is doing, and I'm going to do that. So everyone started talking about QAnon last week, so he decided it's time to talk about QAnon uh, again. And so he just, you know, adds fuel to this fire that is being coordinated by the media organizations, which clearly coordinates with each other. That's obvious. Um... But anyway, so so you see how this works. You, you lay the groundwork for this. Say, c- conspiracy theories are satanic. Then the very next week, the president of the United States says, my Department of Justice is investigating who is coordinating and funding these protests because obviously somebody is. I want to find out who it is. He says there was a plane that got on with a bunch of troublemakers, thugs, all of that kind of stuff. It's coordinated. It's intentional. All that kind of stuff. He says that the people that are coordinated, they're people that aren't, you know, they're they're not the figureheads. They're not, they're not the talking heads, rather. And he's saying, we're looking into it. But if you believe that, because MSNBC has decided to call that a conspiracy theory, well, you're satanic for believing the words of the President of the United States. I mean, that's it. That's the play. That's the, that's the QAnon play, right? That's the QAnon play. Throw shade at everything with the with, that has the, the 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 scarlet letter of conspiracy theory on it and then throw everything that the president says into that category of conspiracy theory that's the, that's where we're at right now and joe carter like a good little boy oh he's got his orders all right he's got his orders. what do you think you think he's on the payroll i don't know i go back and forth i i don't think he is i don't think he is i think he's i think he would like to be <laughs> I think Joe Carter would like to be. I think everything Joe Carter does essentially is an audition to 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 being a, a useful um, asset 
for the powers that be. I think Joe Carter really desperately wants to be involved. I think he, he kind of sees himself as like a super secret agent uh, for the cause of good. But he's all twisted on what that cause is because, you know, he sees a, an article about 40 kids being saved and he's like, QAnon stinks! <laughs> That's, can you imagine being a person, a human being, not a robot, not a lizard? A human being, and you see an article about 40 kids being saved, and the first spot... I'm going to get on Twitter. QAnon stinks. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you found this podcast helpful. God bless. Don't forget to tune in next week on Thursday for AD on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network. <laughs>